Hey everyone, my name is Nick and in today's video I'm going to be sharing my analysis on Canopy Growth Stock to see if this Canadian weed stock is undervalued or if it's a value trap. Lately, growth stocks of all kinds have been getting destroyed in this market and it just seems like whenever you buy the dip, the dip just keeps on dipping. And that is certainly the case for Canada's largest cannabis company where Canopy Growth Stock with ticker symbol weed.to on the TSX is down 80% over the past one year. While an 80% drop might sound unbelievable, it's actually much more common than you might think in today's market and so it might not reflect the underlying fundamentals of this business. So to figure this out let's jump into Canopy's financials right after you give this video a like and subscribe down below so you don't miss any of our future videos. So starting off with a little bit about the company, Canopy Growth is Canada's largest cannabis company by market cap that produces, distributes and sells a variety of cannabis and hemp based products for medical and recreational use. Canopy Growth sells business to consumer via their dispensaries but they also sell at the wholesale level in large quantities to other cannabis businesses. And some of the products that they sell all across Canada are weed infused beverages and edibles, flower and pre-roll joints, as well as other consumer products outside of the cannabis sector like BioSteel that sells sports drinks, bottles, and protein powders. Now as opposed to the US, Canada has fully legalized marijuana at this point and it's allowed to be sold and consumed anywhere within the country as long as you're of age. But this hasn't necessarily been a good thing for the industry since the increased supply has driven down the price of cannabis down to bare bottom so many of the Canadian cannabis producers are not profitable. So with that being said let's take a look at Canopy Growth's fundamentals to see if this 80% sell-off in the stock price is justified or not. So Canopy Growth just released their fiscal Q3 2022 earnings report on February 9th which represents the fourth quarter of 2021 in reality. Starting with their key takeaways the first line the company states is quarter of action drove sequential revenue growth and our best quarterly revenue for biosteel and stores and Bickle businesses. The first question that popped in my head after reading this was why would Canopy only be speaking about certain segments of their business growing? And second, how significant are these parts of the business to their overall revenue? Well, digging a bit deeper, it turns out that these two businesses only contributed 25% of the overall revenue for Canopy Growth, being $35.9 million out of $141 million in the quarter, which did confirm my red flag. Then looking at their overall results, we can see that Canopy's net quarterly revenue shrunk by 8% year over year from $152.5 million to $141 million. So it's now clear why the company only spoke about those certain segments of their business doing well because other parts of the business did poorly. And in reality, the rest of the business did much worse than the overall revenue shrinking 8% year over year. We can see here their Canadian recreational cannabis revenue shrunk 25% year over year their Canadian medical cannabis revenue shrunk 21% year over year, and their global cannabis revenue fell 20% year over year. So literally the only two parts of the business that saw growth year over year were BioSteel and Stores and Bickle, which again only represent 25% of their overall net revenues. So based on this information alone, I am not too surprised that the stock has fallen so much over the past year, but let's take a closer look to see if they're actually generating any profits from this revenue. From their Q3 financial highlights, we can see adjusted earnings before interest depreciation, taxes, and amortization, also known as EBITDA, was negative $67.4 million, which improved by 1% year over year, and then their free cash flow was negative $168.3 million, which fell 24% year over year. <gasps> oh, this is so bad. And as we can see, the huge drop in free cash flow was likely caused by their gross margin being sliced in half this quarter versus last year, which is now at 13%. Oh my gosh. This is so bad. They say gross margin was negatively impacted by lower production output and price compression in the Canadian recreational business, as well as higher third party shipping, distributing, and warehousing costs across North America. So as I alluded to earlier, the Canadian market is getting absolutely destroyed when it comes to oversupply, as well as the marijuana price compression, and this is why many of the Canadian weed stocks have sold off so much in the past year. And by the way, just for some context, a 13% gross margin means that for every $100 of product that they sell, they only get back $13 after paying the direct costs of the goods sold, and this doesn't even account for the operating expenses like overhead. So I'll be totally honest here guys, Canopy Growth's numbers are absolutely atrocious and it really does not seem like they're in a good financial position whatsoever. In fact, the only thing keeping this company from going belly up is the amount of cash and cash equivalents that they have on their balance sheet being worth $1.42 billion, 
which decreased 11% year over year. So Canopy Growth will be able to continue operating until they deplete all of their cash, but it's certainly not reassuring to investors that they'll be able to make a return on their money, which is exactly why the stock is selling off so heavily. The company also shares some charts with their metrics over time, such as the gross margin, which has steadily been downtrending over the past year. Then we can see that their adjusted EBITDA is about flat year over year, and then their free cash flow has been trending downwards. But it is good to see that their operating expenses, or OPEX, trend is moving in the right direction and they also cut their capex completely in the last quarter otherwise the losses would have been insurmountable however the bottom line when it comes to canopy growth and pardon the pun the expenses are not decreasing fast enough for the company to be able to start seeing increasing profits and increasing ebitda all right but now let's head over to tip ranks to see what analysts are saying about canopy growth stock so right off the bat it's clear from the smart score of one that analysts believe the stock will underperform currently there are 13 analysts covering the stock with seven having a sell rating and the average analyst price target is $11.02, representing 24% upside, while the top analysts have an average price target of $11.92, representing 35% upside. However, I truly don't believe these price targets will ever come to fruition unless the company starts turning the business around within the next year. Alternatively, if you are wanting to still invest in the cannabis sector but not take as much risk, there's a company based out of the US in Florida named True Leave Cannabis, which can be purchased on the Canadian Securities Exchange here with ticker symbol TRUL.CN. As opposed to Canopy Growth, TrueLeave is a profitable business with growing revenues, very high margins, and its management is top notch. And while the stock price has fallen over the past year, its fundamentals have only gotten stronger as we can see from analyst ratings. Currently, there are only four analysts covering the stock where all of them recommend you to buy it and the average analyst price target is $72.92, representing 165% upside, while the top analysts have an average price target of $69.38, representing 152% upside. So in case you were disappointed in figuring out that Canopy Growth Stock is more of a value trap rather than being undervalued, True Leave Cannabis is an excellent alternative that I have personally been buying on the dip. Anyways, that is all today, and to summarize, I would not recommend Canopy Growth Stock, even though the stock price has fallen 80% from its all-time highs. Alternatively, True Leave is a stock that Canadians can buy on the Canadian Securities Exchange, and it is a much better company in my own opinion, and it's also trading for a discount. But anyways, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to drop a like and leave a comment down below telling me what you think about these two stocks. I would love to hear your opinion. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to TipRanks, and with that said, I will see you guys in the next one.